皆様こんにちは今日はいらしていただきありがとうございますご出席ありがとうございますあごめんなさいボタンを押,れ押すのを忘れてしまいました I forgot to press my bilingual button Now I can speak English I did this ploy in front of 600 elementary students a while ago After my speech, first graders came up to me and said, Can I touch your button? Can I touch your button? Eyes glittering with curiosity. I think, act, and behave like a Japanese. I think, act, and behave like an American. I can confidently say that only diverse minded individuals understand and can accept diversity. Imagine. And a person who has eaten an apple would not understand about an apple. A person who has eaten an apple and an orange understands both fruit. Today, I'm going to talk to you about neo terrorism, a, coin, a term coined by myself. Neo terrorism is an emergence of a diverse mindset in the process of regulating through two cultures. A person who has neo terrorism. Is uh, uh, flexible, uh, malleable, and able to ac accommodate diversity. When a person goes through cross cultural relationships, usually an individual learns a new language, and potentially that individual develops two cultural identities.、Um, biculturalism has been an enigma for the longest time. In the turn of the century, these, pe、uh, these people were referred as marginal, spiritually unstable, restless, malaise like, and f e r i a n status, and they were inflicted by negative uh, 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 stereotypes such as、um, apples, bananas, Oreos. When I gave a presentation at the California Association of Bilingual Education in San Diego, A Latino lady came up to me after my speech in tears. She was struggling with her biculturalism. Her parents say,、uh, insist on having her maintain her heritage Latino identity. At school, they would say, they would insist on having her maintain a Eurocentric identity. She was definitely struggling with her identity. Another story in Japan. I knew a Japanese boy. He said, I don't have to speak Japanese. I don't have to learn Japanese because I'm going to go to American college and get a degree and I'm going to work for a large American corporation. He was dead wrong. I know from experience that he will never be able to sever his tie with Japan. Unfortunately, Uh, we are misinformed about the potentials and benefits of、uh, developing biculturalism. Developing biculturalism is possible. You don't have to be marginal. In the process of going back and forth to cultures, I lived in Japan for extensive time. I lived in Japan and the United States for extensive time. I came to realize that biculturalism, there's a potential for biculturalism. In this chart, it represents my lifestyle in Japan and the United States. In 1984 to 1992, I was in Japan working in an international department, functioning like a Japanese person. In 1992 to 2000, 2000 I came back, I went to the United States, stationed in Encinitas, California, and worked as a coordinating manager for a new developing graduate institute. And later, I became a home based teacher. At an immersion program at Culver City, California. In 2000 to 2009, I came back to Japan and then I was working at an、uh, international school as a home based teacher, later became a director of an English program at a、uh, private Catholic school in Japan. 2009, 2017, I, I, was, I went back to the United States once again to get my doctorate degree. And later, I taught at three universities、um, in Southern California. And once again, stay with me, okay? Once again, 2017 to now, I'm back in Japan teaching、uh, at a Japanese university. 
In the process of going back and forth, I came across, uh, before that, this, this photo. The left side is uh, my Japanese uh, self as a Japanese educator. The right side is uh, uh, a lecturer at a university in California. Can you tell the difference? Very different, right? So excuse me. In the process of going back and forth to cultures, I experienced three disconnects that led me to the development of neo-terrorism, as well as the urgency to uh, provide this information to you. The first disconnect was, was, my, was my cultural identity. I was, uh, after I graduated college, I went back to Japan, but I was lost. Um, I didn't have any Japanese education, so the questions that kept on emerging was, am I Japanese or am I American? Speaking two languages when I, when, when I was small was, was a challenge. I was born in Tokyo, and later on my family was stationed in Los Angeles, and we lived in Los Angeles for four years, came back to Japan, and I spent my formative and adolescence years in Japan, in Tokyo, at international schools. At that time, I developed what I call an international school identity. The classes were in English, uh, but I did not grow up watching Superman or Batman. I grew up watching manga and anime. So I knew I was not Japanese. I knew I was not American. The second disconnect was in mid-1990s. Uh, I went back to Boston to study, and I came across this theory of identity, a monolithic theory of identity by Eric Erickson. And he defines identity as sameness and continuity. What this means is, for example, John. John was John yesterday. He's John today. He's John tomorrow. And he's going to remain as a John. He's not going to change his identity. So there's a sameness and continuity of the identity. But when posed the question, what happens to this de definition when a person goes through multiple cultures and experience, uh, for instance, biculturalism? No answer was given. The third disconnect is now. What we are all going through, day in and day out, we hear about the disconnect disconnections of the global world. Disconnect between the rich and the poor. Disconnect between uh, technology and humanness. Disconnect between virtual reality and reality. Disconnect between nature and humans. Disconnect between nations and ideologies. Everywhere we see a disconnection. It's about to belong or not to belong. Three clarifications before I talk about neoterrorism. The first, I keep on talking about bicultural identity development, but neoterrorism also implies the people who go through multicultural experiences. Clarification number two, I talk about Japanese identity, American identity, but neoterrorism implies uh, other cross-cultural relationships as well. A Latino person growing up in America, a British with a French, Third clarification, in the process of going through cross-cultural uh, relations, the first and foremost development is your language. Language development is the first thing. OK, so back to neoterrorism. Once again, neoterrorism is the emergence of a new mindset, a diverse mindset in the process of uh, uh, cultivating uh, two cultural identities. I need to describe what I mean by uh, my, uh, diverse mindset. It's, it's, uh, in other words, it's another way to look at the world. It's a new awareness. It's a new earth living. In order to go a little bit more deeply into this understanding, I'm, I'm going to talk about the four elements necessary to understand. The first element is um, the new awareness that identity is your choice. Okay? When you grow up in one culture, uh, you don't really think about your identity. Uh, for example, an Indian person growing up in India naturally becomes an Indian, right? 
But when you launch on a bicultural path, it's inevitable that you think about your identity. While uh, the choices are oftentimes determined by the social and ideological agendas, and oftentimes it's the, the, these factors steer your identity, ultimately, remember, you have the choice for your identity. Second element is functioning, in your, uh, ident uh, functioning is your identity. In the process of going back and forth, I realize sameness and continuity does not quite fit. So what's the definition? It's about belonging to a community. It's about um, being part of a community. It's functioning of the community that determines your identity. What I mean by functioning is uh, it could be working in the community, it could be volunteering in the, in the community, becoming part of the community. That defines who you are, your identity. Third element is you need to maintain cultural balance. And what I mean by this is an individual requires to have equally substantial and significant experiences in both cultures. Okay, you can't just focus on one culture, both cultures. For example, um, while the, uh, the, the, the two, sometimes the two cultures could be um, ch uh, challenging due to the social and ideological understanding, it can be done. Let me give you an example. My Japanese identity and my American identity. Japanese, Japan is a collectivist culture, and what that means is they value harmony, uh, a, a, a community-based mind. The America, the United States, is an individualistic society, which they value voicing your opinion, self-esteem. In Japan, they say, a nail that is sticking out is hammered in. My mother oftentimes told me, Listen to other people. Be quiet. Silence is gold. In the United States, they say a squeaking wheel gets the grease. So if you voice yourself out loud like this, which is the squeaking wheel, you get noticed. People recognize you. So one culture tells you to be silent. The other culture tells you to, be, to make yourself noticed. Can such dichotomizing perspectives be embraced? Can it? The answer is yes. And the reason why I say this is because as people, we are uh, equipped to maintain balance, homeostasis. You all heard about physio physiological homeostasis, also psychological homeostasis. That means we all want to feel happy. We want to feel good. We want to maintain ourselves. We want to feel comfortable. Okay, when, when, the, there, when there's tension, we want to main, when, when there's tension between two cultures, we can still maintain that balance. I can maintain a mentality that is community-based as well as maintain a mind that has to voice my opinion. I could remain silent. I can remain expressive. The fourth element, omnibus consciousness. This is when an individual uh, understands the differences and the commonalities of each culture, as well as a person able to blend the two cultural understandings and create a new reality. I can think, act, and behave like a Japanese. I can think, act, and behave like an American. I can think and act like a global person, a blend between two cultures. It's not about how you look. It's not about how you appear. It's not about where you were born. What matters is how much are you willing to give to the community? How much are you willing to be a contributed factor of that community? How much you recognize and appreciate the jewels of each cultures and willing to make a good community, create your good community. 
it's about becoming you becoming a problem solver. It's, it's about you becoming a storyteller of your own story. Let me tell you an omnibus consciousness uh, personal story. I created an English program for a Japanese school. It was uh, based on constructivism, and that means the curriculum was meaningful education focusing on the Japanese culture. So I blended the US wisdom of constructivism with the Japanese uh, uh, program and created a new program. So in conclusion, what can we do? What can you do? What can educators do? One answer is to teach another language to everyone in the world. Language has the capability to transform an individual. Second language acquisition is the first step. We are in dire need of people who are receptive to multiple ideas and perspectives. And bicultural ident identity development is one method. Neoterrorism is a me another method. In order to deal with the dichotomizing, ever dichotomi dichotomizing world, in order to create one world. It's not about be to belong or not to belong. It's about to belong and not belong. Once again, those who have a, a diverse mindset is capable of an understanding diversity. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. And hopefully, you start creating your bilingual buttons and then live life, life with zest and enthusiasm, eyes glittering with curiosity. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Arigatou gozaimashita.